Mm. Y'all cheer up. I got a dick in my story. <laughs> Y'all looking real white tonight, but it's cool. It's cool. I fuck with it. <laughs> we were criminal masterminds devoted to a life of unlawful acts. Well, other people's felonies and misdemeanors to be exact. A cartel of 10 staff attorneys comprised of recent law school graduates and old timers nearing retirement, reviewing all things criminal for the highest court in the state of Louisiana. Our ringleader, a nutty professor type prone to quoting Springsteen and burst of profanity-laden symphonies reminiscent of Ralphie's dad in A Christmas Story. He supervised our family of lawyerly misfits like a crazy summer camp counselor, taking us on official workplace outings for competitive ice cream eating and even allowing us to wear shorts to work instead of suits favored by our fancy pants law brethren. Assignments in our office were drawn at random for from the wall of shame, a highly technical term describing the shelving system consisting of cubby holes stacked high with legal documents filed by inmates. Inmates with literally nothing but time on their hands in the form of sentences ranging from six, a six month stint to life. With a booming prison population, our job security was given, but so was the occasional bout of cubicle fever setting in after the daily grind of rape, murder, and mayhem. It was 3 p.m. on a Friday, and our crack professional staff was restless with thoughts of happy hour in our heads, prompted by the court's location in the heart of the French Quarter. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Blockaded by boozy temptations on every corner, from Pim's cups to huge ass beers. One by one, we rose from our standard issue office chairs to conspire an early release under the guise of people watching from a corner window. Our boss, now reasonably suspicious after noticing the mass desertion from our desks, joined us in surveilling the tipsy conventioneers, gutter punks, and buskers husky, hustling for tourist dollars. Hopes were high that we could leave behind our life of crime and join the revelry outside. From our vantage point, we could also look down on the court's security shack, always manned by one member of the security team whose main responsibility was the protection of judges who were rarely there. A shift change was now underway with our favorite security guard entering the shack for the remainder of the afternoon. This guard was our favorite because he didn't hassle you when your drunk friends took advantage of the court's palatal bathrooms during Mardi Gras. Moments later, a female court employee came into view, sashaying towards the security shack without any apparent panic or alarm in her demeanor. A collective things that make you go, hmm, filled the air as she stepped inside and closed the door to the shack now occupied by two employees who were married, but not to each other. <laughs> <laughs> and then through the lightly tinted windows of the sh security shack, the female employees upper half began to move just like the bobble-headed U.S. Supreme Court justices on display in the law library. She nasty. <laughs> it was now very clear that a crime against nature was in progress. We were the eyewitnesses to revise statute 1489 defined as unnatural carnal copulation, which included oral genital activity whereby the mouth of one participant is joined with the sexual organ of the other participants. In layman's term, a blowjob. Yes, a blowjob. Which was technically illegal under Louisiana law, but rarely enforced unless you were a prostitute getting the shakedown from an undercover cop. It was also now very clear that we were watching a live sex show. Just like the 
live sex shows available with a stiff cover charts blocks away on Bourbon Street. Except the audience members were our fellow co-workers. The office secretary who baked our birthday cakes, damn. <laughs> And our boss rendered speechless by a scenario not covered by any employee handbook. <laughs> Granted, the subject of sex was part and parcel of our legal work from defendants like Mr. Johnson, conflicted, convicted of publicly exposing all 12 inches of his Johnson. Damn, y'all seen a 12 inch dick before? like a fucking purple unicorn, amen, hallelujah, <laughs> on his ex-wife's front lawn with their children in plain view, or the suburban mom whose dancewear shop was filled with her children's tutus and tights in the front and illegal obscene devices, AKA vibrators, dildos, in the back of their mom, or in the back for their mom. <laughs> That had to be one of my best Freudian slips, y'all. <laughs> However, it was safe to assume none of us came from backgrounds where watching live sex acts was a family-friendly activity. And the realization set in, we slowly backed away from the window, eyes downcast, forming our very own wall of shame our mutual mortification at the sight of our fellow employees afternoon delight guaranteed the workday would be commuted to time served. <laughs> Invoking our right to remain silent, we gathered our things, exited the building, carefully avoiding the scene of the crime. I left the court years ago, as did many of my colleagues. The secretary retired and our beloved boss died last year. But this story lives on in his honor. Love Shaq, baby. Yeah.